Mexico. Hey everyone, it's a dose of Dr. Drew. Here we are, everyone. How's it looking? You're hearing us okay? This is a, a, a big time experiment from a uh, secret location that we'll tell you about in a minute. <laughs> um, but I just want to make sure you're hearing me and that everything is cool. Uh, you know, my the, tech people. The restream is sort of slow. Uh, I do have, you look you look like I got some sun. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, he hasn't. So, you know, I got some sun yesterday. To be fair, I will introduce our guests in just a minute once you guys get a chance to pile in here. I just want to make sure that we're hearing me okay and that everything is sort of technically working properly. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Static. Staticky. Oh, you know, it might just be too loud. Let me turn this okay. a little bit. So where the gain is too high. How about that? Is that static better? You missed us. Oh, you missed us yesterday. Sound is distorted, we're saying. Oh, you see Josh already. Well, I will introduce him in just a second. There's all, there's all love for Josh out there. Okay. So. Ask if it, okay, I turned it down a little bit. It'll take a second. All right. Uh, I'm, in the court, again, my uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, oh, here's a realtor in D.C. wants to say hello to you. Look at that. So uh, the great Josh Flagg is with me. You can find him on all the uh, relevant platforms at Josh Flag one It's two Gs in flag. And, uh, you know, we didn't know each other until yesterday. We it's did. been we a pleasure bonded. to meet you. And we we're bonding and we we're talking about mutual friends. And uh, there actually is a new article coming out uh, on, in LA Magazine about Josh Flagg. And, and, of course, if you don't know Josh, oh, we're a little muffled, they're saying now. It's muffled. Sound, sound is better now. Okay, good. I'm working on it. So we're working on it. Again, this is a, a, a location that we're impressed that we're able to do this at all. So we thank you for joining us. Um, Josh Clark's from Million Dollar Listing. Uh, what, what's the network? Is it Bravo? We have, well, it's uh, NBC Comcast, but it's uh, the Bravo. It's, it's Bravo. Bravo. Bravo, yeah. yes. Um, and the LA Magazine is about to do a day in the life of Josh Flagg, and we thought we would review some of that day in the life. And I just wanted to say, I don't. It, it might not be LA Magazine. It's another one. Oh, another magazine. It's another one, but it's a good one. Shout out to LA Magazine. Shout out to LA Magazine, who might not be doing the article, but I'm trying to find out which one it is. No, let's, let's go through. I, I thought it'd be fun if we just went through some of. Oh, let me before we go into Josh's life and everything that's going on here. Still a little muffled. They're saying. Uh, How's Bobby? People are asking. Bobby's great. We just were uh, doing a FaceTime. We're working on a deal uh, with a client in the Sierra Towers. Um, Want to tell the Sierra Towers story? Well, uh, yeah. So my friend was there yesterday, or, uh, to about two, three days ago, and um, he had a. Uh, he's a broker, and he had a client that wanted to do a second showing, a return showing to one of the apartments on the twenty seventh floor, and so you know he's walking around the apartment the client and he's looking he's like oh i'm gonna put my couch here i'm gonna put my bookshelf here blah 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 and uh the the the, the client goes i hear a knocking at the door will you go see who it is and so my friend who's the broker goes over to the door and checks it out um and um comes back and the guy's hanging off the ledge you mean like walking to the ledge oh no no, no. Yeah. he's full on hanging out he's just you know holding on for dear life like it's on the other side of a railing or something like the side where if you fell you would be dead yeah, yeah, yeah. that side like the yeah. bad side of the railing and um yeah so he's calm as a cucumber this guy he's sitting there he's you know talking about you know how he doesn't want to be a burden on his family he doesn't want to be in a wheelchair in 20 years he doesn't want like things that you would never even worry about at this age and he's just so he there. was in his 50s Maybe. Yeah, maybe 60. Yeah. And he's just sitting there, just, ha you know, having a cool, calm, collected family. And, and, and my friend, who's the broker, is just going, what the, you, you can't do this. Like, well, this is your life. You have a family. You have this. And the guy's not sweating. He's not, he's he's just talking about how he's just, he's ready to go. Five minutes into trying to talk him off the ledge, goes, yeah, I just don't want to do it. Let's go. Bye-bye. 27th floor. And and so I, I'm wondering if he has sort of a, some sort of problem that he wasn't uh, telling anybody. Well, uh, if you, you can see the story online, um, and it probably mentions it. I, I mean, maybe depressed. I, I don't know. Well, but, the, the, what I was going to say was it, I, I'm making assumptions to say that he was depressed, but depression will make you have very strange thoughts. Depression will make you convinced that everyone else is better off without you there's no alternatives that the pain needs to stop now it's, it's it makes you think have abnormal thoughts because it's it's yeah that's part of depression when you well, have suicidal depressed yeah. sometimes but i'm not thinking of going off the 27th floor. well it's interesting not everyone that gets depressed has suicidal thinking and not everyone who has suicidal thinking is depressed isn't that interesting well why would you um, have suicidal thinking not be depressed i mean they're not just um it, it, because... it can be an isolated biological phenomenon like i had a psychiatrist friend of mine that said when he 
he was aware of this distinction, and he said he one day ate this bad banana, and it gave him, he, he suddenly had all these weird thoughts about hurting himself, and he knew it was not something customary, he really wasn't serious about it, but he thought, how strange. He went back later the same day, ate the same banana, and the same exact thing happened. So clearly there's a bio, and, and not everyone would have that proclivity. There's a genetic element in this as well. I have a, I have a client who, and ironically, they're in the mortuary business. Grandpa killed himself, father killed himself, two of the sons killed themselves, and the, and the sister just killed herself. That's horrible. Jump now, off the man in Oriental Vegas. A, oh, my God. It's a reoccurring thing. Wow. So before we get further into Josh Flagg's life, uh, I just because I was responding to you guys on the restream chat. Somebody said, Josh, can I be your female wife? <laughs> what does that entail? Do we have to have sex? <laughs> Obviously not. How dare you? Great. How dare you? How dare you? you? Mean, you don't need to have sex if you're a wife. Sure. If she has a good sense of humor. Your assistant may have something to say about it. Yeah. That, could, that could push her out of a job. My assistant is going on a trip with me next week, and we have to share a room together. That's going to be interesting. That is a, that's a reality show. Mm -hmm. And then you need the TV on. And mm -hmm. Why the TV on? Why do you think that happened? I can't sleep with that television on. I Could don't you use a noise machine? like a, a I don't want wait, to. Wait. I'm very happy with you my, like the TV. I just like it. it I told you last night. I was on the couch till 3 a.m. here. I, I understand. That's where I learned that. And yeah. is that something you've done since you were a kid? Or? Always. Yeah. Never can sleep without the TV on. So, it, I'm sorry to keep... Uh, thank you. i got to glad you like the... Uh, Julie, thanks for the shades. Uh, what is this? Can, uh, can you see on your phone? It's funny. I finally talked to my husband and moving to Texas. Uh, everyone is talking about it. Uh, I say we go uh, first to New Jersey. Huh. I'm not quite getting the full understanding of what you're saying there, except that the exodus to Texas is is phenomenal. It's fast, and uh, people are fleeing California. I recently, as disgusted as I am with the... Yes, that's Heather and Peter behind us. As disgusted as I am with the... Um, the situation in California, I recently thought to myself, I, I feel like I would need to stay in and fight, fight to bring the, the state back, the city back. It's it's because it, I mean, this is what you do as real estate. What, what's your prediction on the sort of market and the well, I'll tell economy you the in Southern California? Well, in terms of Los Angeles, um, I think we need a new mayor. No shit. Um, <laughs> and we need a new governor, perhaps. Well, and I'm, a new legislature, perhaps. I'm on Team Rick Caruso. I want him to run for, for mayor. Because he's a big realtor developer. People he's just the know. coolest. But he's like... I thought he was going to run last time. He's a good friend of mine. I love the guy. He's, But he's very methodical. He's not going to do it unless he knows that he's, you know, that, that he has a good shot. And I think yeah. that he has an amazing shot of winning. And I think that he should run. And I think he probably... Well, I'm hoping he will. But starting with that, we definitely need a new mayor. Uh, yeah, we need somebody to, inv to, to invest in... Los Angeles businesses. Have you seen and the homelessness lately? It's I, just don't even start me. I, I, vanity. That's one of the big things for me, and and I'm working on various coalitions to try to. It's insanity. I, I know, and the and if you know, if you see it from my perspective, the level of insanity is beyond expression. What is going on though? What happened? Essentially, drugs are legal. Trafficking is legal. Stealing to support your habit is legal. And people who want to take care of people with serious mental illness are prevented from getting near them. That's it. That's all you need to know. Oh, okay. Yeah, good news, everybody. But you, do you feel like there's a chance of a recovery if we get our sort of shit yeah, together? Yeah, I mean, sure, of course I do. I mean, but it's got to, something's got to happen. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, I totally agree with you. But, uh, but it may, I, I've recently, I wouldn't say I, I'm feeling inspired or, or, or optimistic so much as I feel like I have an obligation to hang in and fight. I don't know why I was driving. I was literally driving on the 110, driving through downtown, and I was like, I got, I, this... This could be a great city, and it's such a mess. This is such a mess, and I should be in here fighting for it. Uh, yes, I'm not in a studio. Therefore, isn't much you can do other than lower the gain. Okay, Susan has been working on this. Uh, let me see what else you guys are saying here. Yeah, okay, so you, there a lot of people are... Uh, uh, Amy, you're saying, I'm so sick of hearing about the top 2%. Let's talk about real people, real issues. <laughs> Amy, be very specific about what you'd like to, to know about. Um, uh, we're, we've been talking about the, the bottom 1%, which is the, the situation with homelessness. Um, I agree with you that the average, nobody getting more, uh, less support from their government, particularly in California, than the middle class, um, where... <laughs> 
I, I you know, I, my kids are uh, struggling to pay their rents, and uh, they have they have lots of education and grad, some of them professional degrees, and making a living in California is next to impossible. It's really awful. So I, I understand deeply. It's uh, LA Business Journal, by the way. Okay, why can't Lee Manuel homeless not be defined as a 5150, uh, 5152? The, the, to get it's, he's asking why can't we define people? You cannot, you can't get anybody into a 72 hour hold, let alone into a 14 hour hold, let alone into a longer term situation under conservatorship. You can't get it. You just can't do it. It's the the laws are egregious that way, and that's just the way it goes. There was so, a guy the other day um, that was on. The corner of Sunset and Doheny, um, and it's a homeless guy. He's there every day, mm -hmm. and my parents live north of Sunset, off of Doheny. And it's a, um, you know, when you're going, like, I mean, when you're going into that, it's a, it's a very nice area, and it, you see all these homeless people on the corner of Sunset and Doheny when you're going into this area with, you know, mansions and all this stuff. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Right. We, and we I asked him. I said to the guy, I said, well, what's going on here? Like, why are you here? He goes. I go, why, why don't you go to a shelter? He goes, I'm not going to a shelter. That's right, dangerous. Right. They all say no shelters. And I'm like, and it, But part of the mental illness is a lack of insight and a lack of understanding of what, what, what the condition they're in or what they need to do to get out of it. That's part of the mental illness. But look, we do, we do a terrible job of getting motivating people into proper care. Uh, we just don't allow it. Uh, and we have lots of services. We have lots of money. We have lots of ability to render care. We just don't do it. We do need more psychiatrists. We need more acute psychiatric beds. We need more residential beds, for sure, in California. And we need lo drug laws that allow us. I talked to the new DA, Mr. Gascon, and I said, look, I don't know an addict in the world that wants to get well. They're in their disease, <laughs> in their disease that makes them not want to get well. It's, it's, in fact, a disorder of wanting. They want to do drugs. They don't want to get well. And you have to create consequences that move them into care and, and he agreed with that thankfully so we'll see how that plays out um let me do a couple minutes on covid because obviously that's top of mind for people and i see some of it on the restream thread here um covid is uh it, it's it's an it's an outbreak guys it's intense um you know we're up we i, I don't know how many tens of thousands we're going to get to per day before this thing levels off i'm wouldn't be surprised if you saw 200,000. I would not be surprised. Uh, the, there is some good news embedded in it. Um, it is still primarily states that had not yet had an outbreak. They're having it. In those states, the hospitalization is sort of following the uh, outbreak, but not at the same pitch, at the same rate as during the, say, the previous two surges that we had. So it's still lesser hospitalization, and certainly nationwide, oh, quite a bit lesser hospitalization. Let's put it this way. The fact that we're close to 150,000 cases a day and we're only at 60,000 hospitalized, pretty good thing. It's more hospitalization. We're getting towards 70, 80 than we've had before. But I want you to remember that doctors are now encouraging people into the hospital to get these good treatments. Lilly now has a monoclonal antibody. They will have a biclonal antibody soon. Regeneron has a polyclonal antibody. We've got the vaccine coming. We have convalescent plasma. We have the best from Desperate. We have steroids. We have all these good things. But most of that is done in the hospital. And that's why people are being encouraged in. Point being, in spite of the the outbreak being literally four times what the original outbreak was, the hospitalization level is still at the same rate in spite of the change in physician behavior. So that's kind of interesting. The death rate is um, going up. It's going up nationally. In California, I, the, the two states I was looking at that were kind of interesting, actually three, uh, Florida and California look identical in terms of their hospitalization and death rate. They, their, their hospitalization is ticking up. The death rate is just plateauing after having gone down for month, weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, Florida is completely open, and California is completely closed, essentially. I mean, it's better than it was, but most most countries that talk about lockdown, they're talking about what California considers open. Uh, like in England, when they say there's going to be a lockdown, they, that, that is the fact that they're going to not let people go to bars and restaurants after 8 o'clock at night. Well, California, we've been... That's open for us. That's open. We'll let people eat outside. Have you been to um, Cannon lately? <laughs> with the Cannon Street? In Beverly Hills? It's, it's all outdoors, right? Well, it's people every... It's just insanity. But outside, on the, on the street. Yeah, but it's so compacted, it doesn't really even make a difference. <laughs> Which is interesting. And we're taking the mask off and we're eating. So there's a lot of there's a lot of inconsistencies in what we're all doing here. Vaccine coming soon for healthcare providers and high-risk people. Moderna, there's some evidence that they'll be announcing something the next day or two. 
Uh, obviously, Pfizer already announced theirs. AstraZeneca maybe a couple weeks off. So there's going to be a lot of vaccine production simultaneously, which I think will get us in February or so. There'll be a significant amount of distribution, I suspect. Uh, but the question is, what do we do to keep everybody okay until then? Uh, you know, we got to wear a mask, do our thing, and be careful. And um, that's that. But I think we need to navigate rather than shut down. What bring John in? John, can we introduce him? The, this, the, the, Susan asked for you to get, do you mind going on camera for a second? What's that? This well, is, we went, the girls need to see you. Sarah Colomb's uh, husband, John, who a, a former uh, <laughs> Green Bay Packer, Seattle Seahawks. You're going to have to duck down a little oh, bit. Oh, oh. There he is. <laughs> 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 so, Susan, we've got a bunch of people here with us today. I think you saw Heather and Peter in the background as well. Um, Susan, are you watching the restream uh, chat by any chance? Yeah, why? What's Because uh, I can only see some of it. And uh, on your way, John. Oh, uh, 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 you you can later. Later. Uh, here eventually. Uh, uh, does the Moderna vaccine that's vaccine comes out exactly after the election? Yes, I know people are skeptical about the way these uh, things have shown up uh, in terms of the vaccine and the antibody. Uh-oh, what's this? Now, there's a long thing in here. We lost a good friend. I'm sorry. To suicide. Oh, my goodness. Really? Assistant fire chief. A lot, you know, first responders, co cops, fire, firemen, very high risk for this stuff. Um, why is it that's so difficult to get through the grief of suicide? Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, some of it is you feel you should have been able to do something. A lot of it is that you feel angry about that person. Hey John, ask sometimes, Renee said thank some, you. sometimes the ask Renee said thank Susan, you. we're we're getting you on this. <laughs> sometimes, who's Ash Renee? Ash Renee on uh, Periscope. Okay. Can I get a uh, margarita? Uh, sometimes the the grief is all you have to sort of cling to as the last remnant of that person, and and it can be so shocking. And there's oftentimes some anger and some and guilt under underlying all that. Um, hey, from Chicago, uh, is that you, Susan, on the stream? Yeah, that was me. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the day. That's what my COVID. Like, almost saying for one second. I yes, keep, absolutely. Hundred percent. I, like, it's, it's I feel my... kind of badly. Like the other day, I told you there's the homeless guy on Sunset. And well, I like that you talk to him. That's the one thing I, I would say is don't don't recoil contact. But. I had, but I, okay, so I mentioned, like, Sunset, you know LA, Sunset yep. Doheny is yep. like, you go up, it's a very expensive area, yep. the, the hotel's trades, there and stuff, you know. It's, whatever, the, yep. when you're spending $2,000 a foot on a house in that area, and there's an encampment of homeless people right when you drive north of there, mm -hmm. especially, like, as a broker, it's, it's kind of hard to, you know, pitch the area when you have that going on there. Well, how about the businesses that are trying to operate that you can't get in their front door? Well, personally, uh, I don't really care about the businesses there because they're on Sunset. I don't mean just on there, but I mean throughout Los Angeles. You, you literally have no right as a business owner or a yeah. or a property owner to that's true. control the access or the sanitation. Just consider this. Here's one thing I keep saying. We have 100,000 homeless people in Los Angeles. Right. Most of them shit and pee on the street. Mm -hmm. That, when it rains, goes what? right, hang on, goes right into the L.A. River, into the ocean, bypasses the sewage treatment plant. So a city the size of Pasadena worth of sewage goes directly to the ocean. Why are we worrying about plastic straws and not worrying about what that sewage is doing to the wildlife? That, that's my, that's my, to everybody that is a PETA member and is interested in Save the Bay, what are we doing with this incredible amount of excrement yeah. that is going directly to the ocean without sewage treatment? And, and that is it's killing birds, it's killing mammals, it's really having a marked effect, and what what's the plan, everybody? So I just say, at least that maybe that would motivate people. I don't know. So I don't know what to do to motivate people. How what a tragedy this is. Four people dying every day on the streets of LA County. Four per day. So I talked to homeless Four man, and yeah. I'm like, you know, again, Sons and Doheny, you're going up into this fancy neighborhood, yep. whatever. Yep. I'm going to a dinner party at my parents' house, okay. and so I stopped and I uh -oh. talked to the homeless man. Uh oh, did we lose something? Hold on. Before you tell the story, Susan's having an uh oh. Are they? Oh, it's just my. Okay. Go okay, go ahead. You're talking about. Okay, so I'm on the way to my parents' house, and I'm having a dinner party, and the homeless man is on, you know, the corner right there, and I stopped to part to, to yeah, I kind of felt badly, but at the same time, I was like, 
you know, there's a really nice dinner party at the house tonight. Do you mind if you move? Because he's like, there's an encampment right on the corner of, like, you know, across from the addition. You, you've essentially broken the law by doing that. Did I? Yeah, I asked them to move. Well, I didn't demand. I just said, I'm do saying. you mind? I understand. What's the law? <laughs> I understand. What, You're not allowed to mess with their stuff. Really? Their, yeah. No, no, and no, including, I, including, this is the part that bothers me as a clinician, including if they consider their stored urine and stool their stuff. You, it's my stuff. You can't touch it. I said to the guy who's shitting on the corner of the can't touch his shit if he says it's mine. I don't want to touch his shit. If he says I, it's mine. I just it's... said, do you mind maybe possibly moving onto Beverly Drive or somewhere yeah. else? I mean, we're having a nice dinner party tonight. It's yeah. not exactly what I want to see. The guests coming up to my parents' house, you know. And the guy go, can I give you some money to move or whatever? And then I felt badly. I just didn't want to insult him. But I, I don't know. What are you supposed to do in situations like that? You can't really do anything until they change the law. He was very nice. And of course they are. And this is the, the one. The one thing I will tell you is, don't avoid contact with homeless people. Please, everyone, reach out. What you do for them is up to you. Whether it's you think you're helping with food or with money or whatever it might be, uh, but the the lack of contact is one of the more serious problems. So the more, the more politely talk, like I, there's I, a you, house showing. I'm a broker, I, I right? understand. I there's understand. You have a job to do. You have whatever, and and you and you want to enlist their help. And I would look at it as their help. And I think if you considered it uh, a investment, like I'm going to make you, I'm going to give you a job, which is move your stuff, and I will pay you for that job. Reasonable. So is it rude that I said to the guy, uh, this? I have two accounts with the guy. So the house next to my parents, I have the listing on it. Yeah. It's on the market for $10 million. I go, it's a $10 million house. Yeah. Do you mind possibly I, moving? I don't it think, doesn't help I, that I, there's species on the floor, on the corner when you're I, driving to this I, luxury. I, I don't think that's the most sensitive place to talk about. Well, I didn't say it that way. I said, can I offer to get you some lunch, possibly move to another corner or whatever? Yeah. And, you know, he was very nice. He actually yeah. moved. They're, they're lovely. They're many, many lovely. And, they're, and, they're, and no one suffers more than them. That's the point. They're the ones suffering. I said I'm are you left? Can I send you to a shelter? Can good. I do something? Okay, he said, good. no, it's dangerous. Well, that's the that's the part that they, they don't want to go. And exactly. That's that. Um, the police say it's not safe for a woman alone. What do you mean on the streetcar or do you mean in the shelters? In, in any case, the females do suffer. They are trafficked. They, they are, you know, when you go into Skid Row downtown Los Angeles, the, the, the gangs actually control the square footage down there and extract money from people. And also traffic. It's just really bad. It's All really right, bad. no more homelessness. All right, uh, so <laughs> day in the life of Josh Flynn. Okay. Do you have it? Sure. All right, start yesterday. We're going through yesterday. What happened? Uh, yesterday. Okay, well, two days ago, because this is when they... Um, okay, so wake up around 8 a.m., um, smoke salmon, very, very, very thinly sliced from right. Nate and Al's, right. and very thinly sliced rye lock? bread. Can we call that locks? Locks, okay. Like, you know, there's Nova, whatever. I don't really like okay. that. I just like plain old locks. Okay. So we have a little locks, whatever, and then hop on a phone call, watch CNN a little bit, watch TV, whatever. My assistant comes in. Uh, before I get up, we do an hour of, uh, you know, re uh, recoup w w what's going on during the day, whatnot, which is kind of so strange because she's on the Yeah, but I'm in bed and she's on the side of the bed, which is weird. Of your bed? Oh, yeah. So she comes to your bedroom and then sits on the chair. We start for an hour, okay. or whatever. So you haven't showered or shaved or anything yet. No, okay, God course. forbid. Yeah. No. So then, uh, up on telephone calls, uh, get in the shower, and then uh, come downstairs. Uh, yesterday we had a board call with the uh, Jewish Home for the Aging. Oh. So we had a Zoom. You're on the board for that. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we had a Zoom call. And let me ask about something. But I'm gonna, again, each of these things is going to trigger something for mm -hmm. me. Uh, which is you have a extraordinary relationship with your grandmother. Oh yeah. And was she Jewish? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if that is sort of where that spirit comes from to connect. Yeah. And tell people about your relationship with your grandmother. Oh, well, my grandmother was amazing. She was a Holocaust survivor. She killed multiple Nazis during the war. She was in the Dutch underground. Uh, my in, first in, in Amsterdam was that? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, in Amsterdam and Rotterdam. And uh, was she Dutch or was no? She, yeah, she, she was, was Romanian, and she came from a very good family. And her family sent her to Austria to be to study fashion design in Vienna. She saw Hitler march in, literally watched him march in, right in, on in Vienna, in Vienna yeah. on the ring, right outside the yeah. Imperial Hotel. Right. And she said, "I'm getting the fuck out of here." And so she goes to Holland to be a cheese farmer, which is. Yeah, I don't know why, wow. but that's, and then the Nazis come into Holland, they invade by air, and, uh, you know, she joins the Dutch underground forces, they save tons of lives, whatnot, 
Then she moves with my dad, who's born at two years old, in a Christian hospital, uncircumcised, so they wouldn't know that he was Jewish. Interesting. And she would go every day to the hospital as a Red Cross nurse. Nobody knew that was her son. And so war ends two years. When he's, my dad's around two, they go to uh, Palestine, which then becomes Israel. Wow. And then they move here with one dollar in their pocket. Two, actually. Would have had three, but my, grand, my dad had to have a lot of food on the train over. Hang on a second. What is Brand Drew Tube? Hmm? I don't know what that is. Brand Drew Tube. Very interesting. Um, and then you traveled with her, though. 70 countries. Crazy. It's like Auntie Mame. We would go anywhere. How old were you? I started with, I started with a pro track. When my grandfather died, I was 14, 13, whatever. And so when he died, my, I kind of became like my grandmother's companion. Like mm -hmm. It was a great relationship with both of us. She was single. I was a young kid who loved to travel. And we just went but, but all over the world. 12, 8, 15? Or well, I started traveling younger than that. But when I started traveling with my grandmother... It was just the two of us. was probably around 13, 14. Oh, perfect. And any standout stories from that? Oh, my God. There's so many. I mean, I told you last night there was we, one day I said to her, um, I want to see the pyramids in Egypt. She goes, okay, let's go see the pyramids. So a week later, we're flying off to Egypt. We get there. You see the pyramids. It's, what, what, it takes a week, a week and a half. Because Egypt's a big country, whatnot. Yeah. We see, uh, you know, a pyramid or whatever. Two days. Her in. name Edith. Edith. Yeah. Grandma Edith. Grandma Edith. Edith. So you must talk about it on the show because people oh, immediately yeah. Grandma Edith. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two days later, she goes, "Fuck the pyramids. Let's go to Milan. I need a good cup of coffee. Get the plane." Did you Did you see the pyramids? I saw one fucking pyramid, and then we're off on our way. <laughs> was she manic? She was. The, she had Shpokas, she, 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 she always one, two, one, two, one, two. Right? Never, right. never could stand still. And, oh, Shpokas Spilka, Spilka. is sort of disorganized, though. Well, it, 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 it's more like, like, I have the same thing, too. Like, I love an adventure, so if we go, like, say we're here, and you were to say right now, let's go to Maui from where we are right now. Go, do let's it. do it. I love the adventure. Yeah. She, I, I got that from her. I, I think she, it sounded like she was hypomanic, but but it's interesting to me. I, I use When I say the term hypomanic, I'm not being pejorative. There's a quality that some people have where they're sort of always. You think I have it, I think, because the way I, the way I work, um, where you're always just the engine's going, and, and it can be problematic and be associated with something that flips. It drives my husband insane. It can be also associated with depression, but in and of itself, it's not pejorative. It's like it can be very useful if you're in business. And well, I'm sure it's I you, would always. My mom would always say, "Or she's so ADD because she's always that." She would. I am not ADD. I don't take pills. I don't take medication. I will. Well, you eh, could consider it. I mean, it's not so much. Right? It, it, and 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 again, when, I'm sure when she needed to concentrate, she was laser focused. Well. She, yes, but no, she was always not focused, but for some reason she built a huge business. She was able to do it. What was the business? She, we were in the uh, uh, ribbon sportswear. Oh, uh, wow. In the, fa in the fashion. She was really I'm a I'm not uh, I'm looking at some of the stuff you guys are saying. Yeah, I see that Fauci is going to have a Thanksgiving from Zoom, guys. I saw that. Um, I, I'm just worried about mental health consequences. Talk, talk to the people who are at risk in your family and ask them what they wish to do. How much risk do they want to take? Do they want to wear a mask and distance, or do they want to Zoom? Shouldn't it be in the hands of the people that are really in the risk population? So the rest of you, not lots of numbers, I get that. Use your social distancing and masks and stuff appropriately, but as much as possible, households you interact with on a regular basis. But the risk population is the group we need to protect during the holidays. Maybe they should stay home. They may not want to. If you're 80 years old, they may only have two or three years left. Yeah. It's just statistically true. And you may not want to forego your second or third or maybe your last Thanksgiving because of a theoretical risk of something that might have a complication in your age group. That's all I'm saying. You're 80 years Talk to the people that age. Your Let them manage the risk to some That's extent. True. To some yeah, extent. I wouldn't think that. Maybe if I was at 94, I would think that 80. I feel like I'm losing time. Yeah. They do you think about that when you get older? Do you yeah, think about yes, that? Yes, you do. When you turn, I asked my dad and he said, no, I don't think about it. I think well, he's lying. We're, how old is he? 77. Yeah, he wouldn't, some people do anything anyway. Some people, exactly. some people really avoid talking about it. They like they really can't deal with it. They can't. Their brain will let them deal with it. We, I'd say at sixty, we started like like, hey man, we're let's, gonna uh, travel. Let's, uh, yeah, Spiro, we're not doing that. About making your life better. I'm, <laughs> do you actually think like this is fuck? This is depressing. I'm gonna be dead in forty years. Oh. Yes. Oh, it's fucked, but it's less than 40 years for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> when I have fun, well, I can still do it. Right, yeah, we, we so think more in terms of it. We're not going to know when it happens, so you might as well just enjoy it. You'll go there Speaking of which, let's talk about where we are. 
Okay, we are, we are escaping the ordinary. He just escaped the ordinary. Cabo is calling. Come to Casa Edwards. Go to bluedesertcabo.com and use Heather McDonald's code Blue Desert Escape Dash Juicy. I'm not in the picture, but anyways, okay, I so have it. brought us all down here, and that's why we are here. Heather, if you kind guys want to go to Cabo, this is the place. This is the place. All right. Um, we tell them how we broke into the cartel's house last night? <laughs> yes. And the, and we the, thought we were going to the Palmia Hotel, but it turns out <laughs> mm, it was a private it, residence. Did you post the, the video, video somewhere yet? we got to put our videos up. Oh, we'll okay. do it right after this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Guys, look at Josh Five One and Dr. Drupinski and Heather McDonald. We've got some great videos for you. Do we I know something broke into about someone's villa. Moderna vaccine announcement? <laughs> Somebody said, did um, Heather McDonald look Andrew, any uh, Yes. Andrew Ashkazvili. <laughs> I know somebody that's in the business community and there's a little scuttlebutt about in the financial world about Moderna coming in soon. So I think that's happening. Uh, and it makes sense. That it's right on schedule. I actually thought Moderna would beat Pfizer to the punch. So, um, And again, I can't get these vaccines fast enough. I'm, I'm going as soon as it's available. I heard a rumor, not even a rumor, I heard there's a probability that physicians will be getting it through hospitals. So that's maybe how I get it. After the Jewish Home for the Elderly, then what? Oh. After the Jewish home, uh, we have a meeting with our architect, William Hefner. Uh, we're downstairs. We have a, a weekly uh, meeting to discuss the building of our house. You and your Which, husband? My husband, myself, designers, whatever. This is a house that is I... Is your husband real estate too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We work together. Yeah. And uh, the neighbors must think I'm insane. We have literally started this house two years ago, and we have gotten to drywall stage and ripped it apart twice. Wow. Which is, that is not a normal thing. And my husband does not think that's normal either. i anxious to think about stuff like that. Well, no, can you imagine? I've done it. I got into drywall. We're about to start putting in finishes. I'm like, eh, no, not so much. I want to do this again. This is this is attempt number three. Well, that's why we brought on a big, a big name architect. Right, then what'd you do? After that, we go to inspection of a house in Beverly Hills. For, did you uh, want to sell? Or we sell. It's an yeah. $11 million house, closing wow. escrow. How did you get into selling these crazy... I started when I was in high school, believe it or not. I, Just doing little... I went to the Brentwood school, got kicked out in 11th grade, which was really unfortunate. They couldn't give me one more fucking year. Like, literally, they had to wait that long. Go to Beverly to finish my year, and then I got my real estate license. And in class, literally, I would start negotiating on deals on properties in Beverly Hills. And so... Uh, but in Beverly Hills, it has... People think of Beverly Hills, they think about the stuff you sell now. But there's a there's a part of Beverly Hills that's very modest. Yes, did you is. Did you start there? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just... Just, just guessing. Throwing it out there. Just guessing. You know what we call that area? Uh, Baja. Baja, Beverly Hills. South um, of Wilshire. Where, where my family was in that area. <laughs> uh, uh, then what? Keep going. No, I had family all through that area, through the really? particularly Fairfax type stuff. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Uh, we go to an auction at 11 a.m. for the estate of uh, Bob Evans. They oh, my God. How crazy would that have been? It was great. So those of you who don't know who Robert Evans is, he is a famous, infamous, I would say, Hollywood producer in the height of the era when that was the, a, a certain personality. <laughs> And he was also an actor, and he was also a well, he started, cartoon voice. <laughs> he was every. He started as uh, Evans Pacone was. A, he owned a women's sports for a company. Came to Los Angeles, dived into the Beverly Hills Hotel pool, and came out with a laminated business card. Gave it to Hedda Hopper, or to uh, one of them. I can't remember. Got into the acting business, and his yeah. movie was called The Kid Stays in the Picture because Ernest Hemingway uh, was directing the film and says he wanted all. He, he was it Hemingway? I don't think it was Hemingway. It was. It was, I, it I was, think it was Hemingway's. Thing, but I don't think he was direct, the director. You're right. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. But he dated his daughter Marlo. Correct. He was married, or no, he dated her, or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. uh, so you know, Zig Zanuck. Zig Zanuck said it's, it's, it gets out of the picture. And so they're doing a a a bullfighter a scene. Bullfight scene. And he's not a good actor. He's bad. And there, somebody says fire him, and and he does and something. Then Daryl Zanuck gets up and says the kid stays in the picture. And then they go on, and, and then, then they go on, and he there. becomes the biggest producer. Yeah. Chinatown, blah 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 blah. So we and go to the And he married the uh, what's her name. He marries Alan McGraw. Alan McGraw. That was that was the height of his stuff. So and then he gets out. a little drug problem. Yeah, a little problem. Jack <laughs> just has to bail him out, buy his house back. Takes him down pretty yeah. damn good. And, but I'll uh, tell you something. He was a great guy. When he died, he left in his will uh, money to a few of friends of mine that are not my age, are his age, that 
were really good to him during his life and left them a lot of money. And I thought that was amazing. And is there anything interesting in the paraphernalia that's left behind, the stuff that's in the so auction? I, I did on the Chinatown uh, manuscript, the original one. Wow. It went too crazy. Suzanne Hughes ended up winning it. Um, so Natalie Bloomingdale and myself bid on a pair of paintings, and we won them. And I have one in the house oh, wow. now, and she has one. Paintings that he did or that? No. No, no, no. no. Um, so from there, we drive to Malibu. Uh, we have Matthew Perry's house on the market for sale. We're doing inspections, so we go out there uh, for the inspection. It took a while to. It's been gone a, over a year, isn't it? Gone from where? Wait, not Matt Perry. I'm thinking of uh, Matthew Perry. Luke, 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 no, Luke Perry. No, 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 no. Matthew yeah. Perry was on yeah, friends. Got it. Got it. Uh, drive there, come back, put a pole, watch for lunch. Do you like the pole? Uh, I've not been there in years. Really? Uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I've never been there during the day, I would have to say. May or rarely. May a rare meeting over the years there, but like, really? it seems like I go there at night. That's interesting. And it's, it is one of the more iconic spots in Los Angeles, and it is sort of lovely, right? It's it's not that I think it's beautiful yeah. there in the Bel Air Hotel. I think the prettiest places to sit in L.A. outside. There used to be a restaurant called Pane Vino. Wait, wait, wait. You're confusing hotels now. What? That's the Beverly Hills Hotel, Polo Lounge. Yeah, and you I said, said the Bella Hotel. No, no, I said the, like also the Bella Hotel, which I think it's just a lovely place to sit outside yeah. in the daytime. With the ponds and stuff. Yeah, or even the Ivy. It's even though it's like kind of like you know cliche and whatever. I have not had time for lunch since uh, 1979. So what do you do? What do you eat for I, lunch? I eat. I'm on this no carb diet, and I just eat at the refrigerator and get on about my business. Doctor Atkins. You know, I cut out, uh, I was doing a podcast about health and fitness with my former Loveline co-host, Mike Catherwood, and he, I, and he was always trying to get me to change my diet, and I was like, I, you know, I've tried everything, I've done everything, and he goes, if you tried this, you're cutting out carbohydrates, and you try the sort of a carnivore diet, and I was like, all right, I think I'm ready to do it, and, and I did it, I was actually going keto is what I was doing, and three days later, I felt so much better, I was stunned. Didn't you I, eat yesterday? Oh, no, you didn't have the chips. I had the chips. I had the meat at the dinner. All that meat that was sitting there at the dinner table, that was mine. And and so I, I three days later, felt so much better. I, I literally think to myself to this day, if I were able, to, were able to speak to myself four days hence from where I started, I would not have believed it. It was that much better. So today and just, you're only eating... And I just stuck with it ever since. And, it, and I'm never so hungry. But, 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 but hold on, so you can't have sushi then? No I can't California have roll? Meat. No California roll. But I can have the sashimi. Oh, yeah, you can have sushi. Yeah, he wants the sashimi. You want the well, food. last night, that stuff we had was amazing. But you, but we had sushi. I didn't, the eat the sushi. I didn't eat the sushi. Interesting. I didn't eat the tortilla. Do you look at it and you're like... No, I don't, which is really fascinating. That's how you would think it would be. But it, it really is not that kind of diet for me. And so, and since I've been, I've been doing a little bit of research on this, and it, it looks as though for people with metabolic syndrome, like me, who are the ones at risk for COVID, right? I have hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, central obesity... All this stuff, uh, central fat distribution, adiposity, really. Um, we have a little inflammatory reaction, and it's, it's it looks like some of that inflammatory activation is mediated by insulin. And, and when insulin is down because you're not taking carbohydrates, all that gets better. So it would be really interesting if I get COVID to see if I get some of the complications I or not. You, you look, a, you're very fit. Yeah, I but I'm a setup for it. I'm biologically, genetically a setup for trouble. So we'll see. You know, it will be interesting, right? Um, all right, what came after that? Five o'clock. I'm going to look at the strip. Somebody gave me a oh. shout out for my show. For calling out with Susan Pinsky. Well, Thank sessions. you, everybody. So how I'm I'm just trying to keep this show moving on. It's I'm hoping it doesn't stop. At Te technically. Any, yeah, we're outside, overlooking the ocean is there and a, time a pool. We, and the Wi-Fi is okay. Wi-Fi is glitchy. So and then after this is done, I'm going to lay in the sun and drink. Oh, okay, it's all good. It's okay. Oh. She's, she's staying. Well, we'll keep going until they kick us off. Yeah. In the end of the How long have we been on so far? I don't know. You could. Uh, uh, 40, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. That's so, pretty yeah, good. So, yeah, plug your show. So, where can people find the show on Bravo? Is there a new season coming up? <laughs> a new season? <laughs> we just started filming. Well, it was, like interesting, because we, we're on season 12. Oh my God, that's incredible! Congratulations, I said, season six. I said Seinfeld lasts of eight seasons. How the fuck is this going to last till you know? Awesome. Weird. Yeah. We are. So happy for you. So I am Dr. Lancer, Dr. Lancer uh, for like chemical peels, whatever. And um, but you went to you went to, went some to drug, Dr. Lancer, some stuff. and I only Doctor on Rodeo Drive. It's I mean this guy must be making a killing. I mean, this oh, guy's... he's uh, he's the dermatologist in the arcade. 
the arcade. Well, yeah, the, the, walk the corner, yeah, the walkthrough. No, no, that's on Canon, isn't it? Oh, oh, no, 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 you're talking about the, the Rodeo collection. Yeah, no, yeah. He's above the Armani store. Okay. This office is I insane. I said dollar wrong. I knew there was something around. Dollar? Dollar. Well, dollar? God bless, <laughs> God bless everybody. I mean, I, I, uh, I wish business success on all humanity. Right. I want everybody to thrive. That's my whole goal. So you don't like this. 5.30, I go to this guy, not a chiropractor, but he's some kind of a doctor. He made me taller. Hmm. Interesting. Good. Not a lie. Yeah. This is actually factual. I walked in and I was five foot nine. After three weeks, I'm now five foot ten. Wow. So he's doing elongation. He's said. doing these weird things. It's the most painful thing ever. He's yeah. pushing like this and yeah. that. And I said to the guy, I said, do you know what you're like? What if this is like has bad ramifications? I mean, we don't know what it was like. You'll be fine. He's like, <laughs> oh, it's right. I am literally two it, inches taller. It is an interesting taller. question, though, which is what is the... You know, what are the... Talk to me in 15 years from right, now. Right, right. What are the long effects of these things? And what, but what, is that crazy? Do you know you that, can make someone longer? Well, I mean, I certainly know you can make somebody shorter. So it but makes that sense we to know, me, but, yeah. That, that you, you were fighting gravity in the other but direction. But the point is, he marked my head on the wall. Yeah. Two weeks later, I am literally two inches taller. Exactly. And I have not shrunk yet. <laughs> No, but I get off the table and I feel dizzy. I'm like, yeah. I feel, because you know how I can tell? When you hang a painting on the wall, you, you hang it, uh, you know, at eye level to what your height is. Yeah, like, yeah. I want to decorate. So when I'm, I came back home and I was like, something feels off here. I'm looking at the painting and it seems lower to me. I really am taller now. That's crazy. crazy. So, uh, that's cool, though. Susan, oh, it's Andrew Rushkin, the up to again. Do I think the... We'll run into problems distributing the Pfizer vaccine because of temperature. So Andrew Ashkavili is pointing out that the the uh, Pfizer vaccine and all the RNA, but all these vaccines are need to be stored and transferred and maintained at minus 18 degrees centigrade, uh, and that is one of the big conundrums of these uh, RNA vaccines that they're. But I uh, I am aware. That that uh, are you wearing a mask? Yeah, Just show you you mask. We're like, <laughs> because they're asking her why she's not wearing a mask. The guy's working behind me oh, okay. uh, with his mask. With his mask. Uh, and and um, the, I know that Federal Express and other transportation <laughs> organizations are getting geared up for refrigeration transportation. The the and so all you got to do is have the transportation to the hospital or to the distribution site, and you're good to go. We pull it out of the refrigerator, or the freezer, and we give it to you. So there is ample thought being being put into that, uh, Andrew. Well, well ahead of the Wait, Pfizer can I ask announcement. You a question? Yeah. Somebody said to me this the other day. We're sitting and having lunch, and they go. This is in reference to COVID. They go. This is all blown out of proportion. More people die a year of the common flu. Well, so <laughs> is that just you're, you're asking something very complicated? So so flu data is somewhat nefarious. Our flu data may not be as accurate as we think it is. Um, this clearly is more deadly than the flu, and we clearly had a pandemic in our hands, and its infectivity is clearly extraordinary. We had a period of excess death. We had a several-month period of where, our, or we, you know, there's a graph that we have a normal number of deaths every day. And we suddenly came off that baseline and had excess deaths. Now, after sort of mid-summer time, the excess death went down below normal which suggests that the people that died in the excess death group would have died three or four months later, which is actually true. That most of the people, for instance, right now they're showing that one out of 11 people that are hospitalized with COVID are re-hospitalized. That became a headline on, on Tuesday. I went back and looked at the data. It's all nursing home patients who are already in and out of the hospital on a regular basis. My grandmother basis. was in a nursing home, died of COVID. Well, I'm sorry to hear. Uh, Edith? No, yeah, Edith so. was dead five years ago, okay. please. Um, My other grandmother, but, 98, but, though. So that's okay. Well, e well that's yeah, the point. That's is that, is that, it, it's, We're going to eat. Oh, wait. Okay. Come over here and say hi. Which uh, this is Everybody uh, saw you. This is Heather McDonald, yeah. Hello. 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 She is. We yeah. are going to have our lunch now, so you're going to have to wrap it up. Okay. Right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're going to miss out then. No, we're you already gonna... missed breakfast, and I thought you were dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were dead. Like, I was dead, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, point being is that of those re hospitalized group, there's the people that are already in and out of hospitals a ton anyway. Just So, you know, it, I, I'm not willing to say, oh, they would have died of something else I, anyway, but there is, you know, part of aging is you don't you don't die of aging, you die of pneumonia, you die right. of you break things, that, and things, you die. Right, things that happen as a result of aging that make it impossible yeah. to live yeah. beyond that. And, and so and pneumonias and viral infections are one of those things. 
and that and because this thing is so damn infectious, it took out a lot of people that might have lived a year or two more, might not, who knows. But it's the, the, the tragedy is what affects people that are younger, and of course then it's very, very tragic. Well, that's what I said with my grandmother. She was 98, I mean. Yeah, there's a time to celebrate. Uh, if, you, if you live past 85. Well, I'm fine. I wish she would have made it to 100, Jesus. I mean, she was pretty close. Of course. Of course you wish, but, but okay. So, so um, the, one of the other things to think about is, you know, what do old people want? Do they want to push on past all those extra years? Oh, she would have totally. Do they, she wanted to be in a nursing home. No, she did not want to be in a nursing home. Yeah, but see, that's the... Her housekeeper of 50 years yeah. started when she was 22, needed to retire. So it was my 95-year-old grandmother and an 85-year-old woman taking care of her. It was like the blind leading the blind, yeah, no, right. literally. Yeah, that's right. We were finally like, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, there's a point at which the quality of life becomes so bad, you have to really think about whether that... I, I would not want to go on like that, personally. I would... Well, you don't know what you're at you that's an insightful statement which is like saying who wants to live to 97 ask a 96 year old that's right? funny okay but i know what that is i i take care of lots of people like that i don't want any but there are some of those that literally are just be doing no, fine no, absolutely and they should have their they should be free to choose to be safe and to go on and all those things i'm not i'm not you know what i think about last night i was always thinking about like what do old people think about when they go to sleep do they does it cross their mind that they might not wake up in the morning you know, I take care of lots of elderly patients. So I'm doing internal medicine, and the end of life stuff is very common for me. Um, no, people usually aren't thinking about their their sleep. Sleep doesn't usually figure into that. They they usually will ask to go. Many of them ask. They want to go. I'm living too long. I want to go. I want to go. But they don't think maybe tonight. I would be very nervous. No, I'm also very ADD. I would think about dying that. during the night is not so common at that age. You, no, really, it's, it's more you get a pneumonia. So why would you read the obituaries? It's like they pass peacefully in their sleep. Is that bullshit? Uh, in their sleep means encephalopathic with sepsis. In other words, they're not conscious. Not, they don't oh, mean in under sleep. Like, okay. They don't mean in their sleep. So it's not like a new in hospice sleep. care and they just hospice or you let them go with the septicemia but or whatever. Don't people just actually just pass out and don't wake up? There is such a thing. It's just not that common, and people don't tend to think about it. Because I think that I hear, oh, that's nice. You well, when, when that happens, that's wonderful. That's why people go, oh, my God, that's great. I would be nervous to go to bed every night. It, it, it doesn't enter. Your, your question was you wonder if they think about it. They don't. I mean, I'm sure somebody does. You will. But, but for those folks, well, because well, you've got it in your head. And Do you want to hear the rest of my day? Yeah. We're, we're at 7 o'clock. No, I think we have to... Bonnie, uh, Bonnie said her granny died in her sleep at 98. That's beautiful. When my that grandmother happens. did? No, no the his, woman her. on Facebook. Her when that kind of, listen, when anybody dies their 90, it is a mitzvah, as your people would say. We got well, to I mean, 7 o'clock. We can't finish the day. So All right, go ahead. Finish. Finish okay, up. Okay. So Heather is going to get pissed at her. Oh, she's fine. All right, go ahead. Fine. She's talk, talking in the background. But. 7 o'clock. We have dinner. Uh, our housekeeper lived in Rome. She was a nanny, and she took care of these kids there, and she was an amazing chef. My parents come over. These are the ones that have the the really fancy house with the homeless person that's yes, you know yes. uh, won't stop you know coming up to their gate understood um and then we do a zoom call with suzanne summers and alan oh, how fun lovely people lovely you know suzanne i do and i know alan too really yeah isn't he the best he is the best they're such an interesting character you know that they fuck every day are we going to swear on this thing yes that's good it's good for them i think that's a uh oh Bye. Jonathan wants to know if I was wearing masks. There's a guy behind me making drinks, so I'm and he's wearing a mask. trying not to be naked. Okay, speed it up. 8 o'clock, masseuse comes. We have a massage every Monday. I do that in honor of my grandmother because she would have a massage every Monday. Good story. My grandma's masseuse died, left her a half a million dollars. The masseuse. Wow. Excuse me, a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Because my grandmother was the only person that ever took care of her. Whenever oh, she wow. had a problem, she would take care of her. So my grandmother, oh, wow. her mind, she gave it to the Jewish Federation. Wow. And now Minka, the masseuse's name, is on in the lobby, on the wall. Isn't that the cutest That's thing ever? Sweet. Leopold wants to know, Dr. Drew, are you concerned that the CEO of Pfizer sold 60% of his stock on Monday? Um, mm. I, I am not concerned because... Uh, Give it up. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. It, 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 because here's the thing. The, the, that vaccine is inexpensive. They're not going to make a lot of money from it. And the exuberance of the idea of the vaccine is probably in the price of Pfizer right now. So it's probably a very smart thing that he sold it right now. It's not, the company's probably not happy about it. Well, today the but, market went down. So. Okay. 
There's also a, a Democrat in office, and that's typical when a Democrat comes to office. What? The market drops. No, it actually the market went no. up this week. Well, it? only because of the vaccine, but well, today it went down. I, I'm not sure that that's true. That uh, Democrats necessarily are so sure of the long From what I've seen, I keep so who's going to be the next thing. president? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so let's let's wrap this up. I, I'm distracted by these guys. I'm hungry, so I want to. Hungry. Hungry. Uh, hungry. Uh, is that the end of the day? What? Is that the end of the day? We did it. Well, we're only at nine. But anyway, I have a Gibson. Go to bed around three a.m. and that's the end of my day. Okay, there we go. Wait, wait. I want to see if I can find a picture of. Oh shit. Of what? I didn't want to like drop the stream because I'm over here making sure we don't lose anything. I'm, I'm gonna give you. Right, go ahead. I wanted to, well, I'm trying to get a photo of, of this place, ah. but if you, we'll have a photo tomorrow, and we'll have Heather on tomorrow, and also, um, we have some great people here to be guests, and I'm so thankful that you were able to join us today, and I didn't have a choice. tell your story, <laughs> yeah, and, that was great. yeah, it was like you were sitting here, and I was setting up, I go, you, 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 what would have you done if I wasn't sitting here, who would have you interviewed? I would well, either. everybody loved you, so, yeah, we would have, uh, Probably drag Sarah or Peter or what somebody in, and and then I would have talked to my uh, restream uh, friends here about COVID and whatever's on their mind. Nice, but I, I, it's, it was a little technically challenging because I'm having to watch the restream on the phone. Yeah, I haven't heard of IBM. So I just years. once again I just want to IBM. I, I don't they even make anymore. I want to know. They do other stuff. They yeah. do IBM. They do big uh, database type of stuff. Yeah. So that's Peter's voice over my shoulder. So, anyways, we're at. Oh, oh, you're still on. We're yeah. at Casa Edwards. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Also, check out Peter last night when he broke into a go up the cartel. Oh yeah. Check out our, I see that. Yeah. So we're here with Josh. Josh. Uh, yeah, we'll 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 retweet and stuff. So you can go to our Instagram and find all the photos. We're going to be taking the next few days, but also Casa Edwards is it's near the Palmia. It's very lovely, and you can go to bluedesertcabo.com and use Heather's code. For a discount, you get like if you book three nights, you get the fourth night free. You know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. five nights get two. Blue Desert Escape Dash Juicy. All right, guys. Josh, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. it was really fun. Great, yeah, great to know fun. you and meet you. Me and I uh, hope we'll go on and do more things and stay in touch. The homeless guys. Hang I need my hydro light. And uh, are you gonna? Okay, and I want to thank you all for bearing with us today. We'll, I guess, be in again tomorrow. Is that I'm right? going to write a Better Life Recovery ad at the end, just in case everybody knows where I'm going after this. <laughs> and and uh, are, are you are in here oh, wait, I have to put the Are we in, in here tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll be back. Okay, we'll be back in tomorrow. Uh, uh, stand by for who my guest will be, one of these folks that have been running around here. Maybe Josh will come back give us another day. Let's Josh. Like, yeah. Two days in a row? Yeah. You can talk you're, anytime you want. You're, you're, wow. You can do this one later if you want. We'll How many playing. of these do you do? No, I'm going to get some sun because like I haven't been out in the sun yet, but um, I'm going to get a tan and we're going to go to dinner tonight. Where are we yeah, going? We're having lunch right now. Yeah, yeah so that's it. We're just, All right, guys, we're thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow about the same Bernie time. Sam says national survey on drug use and health, approximately 20.3 million people above the age 12 suffer from substance use disorder. Incredible. The disease of addiction takes an average of 130 Americans every day. Sadly, the opioid crisis, which many consider the worst pandemic of our time, has been even further perpetuated by the spread of COVID-19. Since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, drug overdoses have increased by 18%. Factors like economic stress and social isolation have led to increased depression and unnecessary deaths. A Better Life Recovery is a premier addiction treatment center in Southern California, offering one of the most highly regarded and comprehensive addiction treatment programs in the United States. Dedicated to helping its clients achieve complete inner and outer transformation, they offer a 45 to 90 day program custom tailored to meet the needs of each individual client. Long term is the way to go. Many of a Better Life's clients elect to stay up to nine months to receive additional support. A Better Life Recovery will do whatever it takes for as long as it takes to ensure the success of every client. Are you ready for a better life? Go to abetterliferecovery.com or call 866-581-4401 now. With so much focus on keeping ourselves and our loved ones safe and healthy, it's easy to forget that most of us are going to experience things like allergies, colds, possibly even the flu. So reminding you, proper hydration is 
crucial for all of these things. Remember, even slight dehydration can make you feel like you're getting sick, and none of us need that anxiety right now, that's for sure. That's where Hydrolyte comes in. Longtime fans will remember my obsession with Hydrolyte, which is simply the best oral rehydration product I've tried. I'm even more excited to introduce their brand new single serve powder sticks. Simply pour one powder stick into a glass of water. They recommend seven ounces. The powder dissolves almost instantly, creating the perfect balance of sodium, glucose, and water. Delivers up to four times the electrolytes of your typical sports drink. The other great news about Hydrolyte's new powder sticks, they're 100% all natural, no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. They're available in flavors like orange and lemonade, and they taste great. Hydration is crucial, and Hydrolyte is fastest and easiest way to stay ahead of it. Get your supply of Hydrolyte powder sticks now at hydrolyte.com slash drdrew. Again, that's H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com slash drdrew, and then use that code Dr. Drew 25 at checkout. The World Health Organization estimates that each year approximately 1 million people take their own life. That's one death every 40 seconds. Experts predicted numbers would peak in 2020, but no one could have imagined the devastation brought on by COVID-19. During the coronavirus pandemic, you may experience anxiety, sadness, and loneliness. Existing mental health conditions, including severe anxiety and major depression, may worsen. If you're feeling hopeless, contemplating self-harm, or you're concerned about someone else, I'm here to tell you there is hope. A Mission for Michael is dedicated to helping clients achieve complete inner and outer transformation. Mission for Michael is the premier resource for intensive mental health treatment in Southern California. With an astonishing two-to-one client-to-staff ratio, each client in their facility receives individual care 24 hours a day, overseen by a team of all doctorate or master's level clinicians. With a focus on evidence-based treatment, along with personalized and compassionate care, they offer mental health treatment that can change lives. If you're suffering from mental illness or you're concerned about a loved one, go to amfmtreatment.com. Again, that's a mission for Michael, AMFM, amfmtreatment.com or call 866-581-4401. Again, that is 866-581-4401.